Hi, my name is Patrick. I'm Radio Call Sign Delta Hotel 3 Papa Mike, and this video is about the handpack. Today I'm out in the field for you testing the handpack. Come and join me. Why building a bulky and heavy case around a lightweight transceiver? The idea of the handpack was to create a man pack with actual ham radio hardware. It was not designed for SOTA and activities like this, but for rough outdoor use and emergency communication. So why do we need emergency communication, especially here in Europe or Germany, where everything is safe? Well, ham radio is used everywhere around the world. And think about hurricanes, hailstorms, a big flood or a tsunami. Think about if you lose the complete power grid. So what is the first and most important thing you need? Communication. Without communication you are lost. That is the reason why ham radio equipment all over the world is used just from a few people to have it when the public needs it. As commercial man packs are expensive like hell and old ones are equipped with old technique, the idea was close to build a man pack from amateur radio equipment. Back in 2014 I talked with some friends about man packs. We thought about some key features the ham pack should have. We wanted to do something different than the other guys, creating their emergency equipment mostly by using cases from the hardware store. So don't misunderstand me, they are doing a great job. Ours should be stiff and with more power, plus a tuner and maybe some other goodies. We wanted to come closer to the commercial handpacks like every homebrew before. As Jesu couldn't provide me the CAT data, I had to do a reverse engineering of the transceiver at first. The design was done in a CAD system named Autodesk Inventor. As I am a CAD CAM specialist, I could do the complete design process and machining by my own. We had a lot of ideas and in the end I did six different design studies. The biggest problem was to protect the transceiver front end against water and force. After a little time I found this thing. This is made to protect radios on boats. That leads me to the final idea of the protecting cover for the transceiver's front end. If you close it, the transceiver's front end is protected against force and a sealing rubber band will protect it against water. This was the best we could do because any other idea was simply too expensive. In an earlier stage we had the idea to replace the complete front end. So I visited a company which produces waterproof front ends. They didn't took the idea seriously and until today there was no response from that company. So we tried this on our own with a Beaglebone Black and a touchscreen, but also this was too difficult. At one point we had to start somehow, so I did the programming of the machine in a CAM system. The advantage is that you can simulate everything before you go to the shop floor and make some chips. We machined three handpacks, but still there was a lot to do by hand. The cooling fins that you can see on the side of the handpack are not needed. This was a test for future housings and don't forget that it looks cool. The holes on this side are to connect the transceiver to the computer and also to the power. Let's take a look inside the handpack. Please keep in mind that this is a private project and so the financing is. We try to keep everything as cheap as possible, but also we tested out some things for future ideas. Inside there is enough space. Sure, it could be smaller and lighter, but at some point we had to start producing. Inside there is space for a 10 amps battery and its loading electronics as well as for the tuner. There will be another video to explain the electronics in detail. The transceiver is bolted by a screw in the back and I used the screws in the front end. This is absolutely enough for this lightweight transceiver. Between the transceiver and the battery there is a plate with some holes to fix the electronics on it. 
In the beginning we wanted to use some plugs to connect the transceiver to the computer. Then we found out that we could remote control the transceiver via Bluetooth. We put the Bluetooth device into a machine pocket in the handle made of plastic. That worked really well, so you can place the handbag somewhere out in the rain with the cover closed and remote control it from a safe place. On the side there's a simple cigarette lighter connection to connect it to the power from outside. On the other side of the handpack there are some cooling fins. As you need to equalize the pressure there is a device beside the fins. If the case is closed you might get into trouble with condensation if you don't have it. The top cover is a simple plate made out of aluminium and rubber. We did some testing with different colors and coatings. To close the front cover there is a simple clamp. We used an Elecraft T1 tuner and only placed it in a metal case. The tuner is connected to the front end of the handpack. There are some waterproof buttons with indicating lights for tuning and bypass. The other buttons are to power on the handpack and for Bluetooth. These buttons are made for rough usage and they are waterproof but they also lead us to a bigger handpack because of its size. The electronics only made controls the power and all the surrounding devices like Bluetooth, tuner and infrared device. There was also a DSP filter but we didn't use it. That would lead us into more buttons in the front end, so we dropped it even if it's a good filter. The power from outside should always have the same level, so we need to put a DC-DC adapter into the handpack. That gives you the freedom to use voltage from 9 to 30 volts or more depending on the device. Some of these devices make noise all over the shortwave, so you have to watch out for a good one. FT817 nun mit dem äh, Palm Radio Infrarot Modul ausgerüstet. Hier ist äh, die kleine Morsetaste mit Infrarot Sender. Da ist äh, die Empfängerdiode und gleichzeitig auch Power On Indikator und äh, TX Indikator, wenn ich CD mache. Also. The battery I use is a 10 amps lithium iron phosphate battery. After a lot of testing this turned out to be the best choice. Another problem we had to face was the loudspeaker. For a good one you need space and protection and you have to make it waterproof. That leads me to the idea of using a waterproof loudspeaker microphone from Yezu. Everything we need is in there and it's relatively cheap. The only problem was the connector. It has to be waterproof too. As I didn't found a good socket, we simply replaced it. The connections to the outer devices changed from time to time during the design process. I tested a few different ones because there was a lot of cheap crap on the, out on the market. The connectors used in the military area are very expensive and it's not easy to get them. Also the power connection is very simple. The waterproof connectors from power pole are too big and as there are a maximum of 3 amps running on the connector, the cigarette light connection is enough. The handpack is not a lightweight baby. 800 grams for the battery and around 2.5 kilograms for the housing. All inclusive you have around 5 kg 
for the complete hand pack. Grazie, 73, 9 Alpha 0.